You know, during the GameStop congressional hearing, securities lending was a big topic of discussion. So what is securities lending? Well, we're gonna talk about that today. My name is Victor Medina and welcome to the Medina Retirement Planning Channel, which what we help you do is get ready for retirement, get your ducks in a row, get your nest egg secure. It's what we're all about. So listen, by now everyone, nearly everyone is aware of the GameStop frenzy and the short squeeze that took place basically led by users of a subreddit called Wall Street Bets. Now I have this whole other video that talks about what that was and how it occurred, but the whole idea is that it caused the significant price uh, volatility in the stock. And as information has come out and involved parties testify before Congress, individuals really had more questions and answers. Nothing was really solved. But securities lending was a big topic. And it's one of these things that is, there's these transactions that are negotiated through a network of trading desks and spreads, trading volume, liquidity, all kinds of data that's not readily available to the public. And this kind of opaqueness has caused many people to dig deeper into the securities lending process. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what that is so that you can know it and maybe be a uh, the lead participant in a dinner conversation about what it was you can show off to your friends. So securities lending is actually a transaction in which the owner of a stock who becomes the lender temporarily loans that security to another party, it's a borrower, that would like a temporary possession of it to cover a trade or sell it short or add liquidity to their inventory, actually add it to what they can sell or trade or arbitrage some foreign tax systems. There's a whole bunch of complexities in there, but every securities lending agreement is different. And at its core, what it really does is this lender, the person who's the owner of the stock, gives the security to the borrower and typically receives some collateral equal to the current market value of that security plus a margin, right? Because they got to make a little bit for being the lender, just like a bank. So the collateral is marked uh, to a market e each day and has to be equal to at least 100% of the market value for U.S. government securities um, or agencies, 102% of the market value for U.S. securities, or 105% of the market value for international securities. So securities that are illiquid or high demand are often expensive to borrow, generating higher revenue for the lender, right? Because supply and demand, if you don't have it available, then you can charge more for it. Now, when the borrower returns the security to the lender, they are often returned their collateral. So up to that point in time, the lender has the ability to invest the collateral. So if they gave them money for it, they can go and invest that money. If they gave them something else in return, they can go invest that, which is commonly done in this sort of overnight reverse purchase, uh, repurchase agreement or repo contracts, this short-term debt securities or money market funds. All right, so what is it, you know, in terms of it? Securities have been lent going on, uh, securities lending has been going on for decades, and P plays a really important part in uh, capital markets. Um, unlike uh, other investment companies that keep some portion of the revenue, all of the revenue that's generated from securities lendings when the investments that we recommend to our clients goes back to the fund shareholders, because that's really kind of the right, right way to do that. But what we saw in the GameStop is that this whole arrangement really caused there to be this crisis because as things got less and less available, um, it got riskier for people to hold on to these positions. So as I mentioned, it's been going on for decades, an important role to capital markets. Um, in addition to the process uh, bringing greater liquidity and efficiency to markets and promoting price discovery, it's also a way for fund managers to earn additional revenue on behalf of their fund investors. And by the way, one of the things that happens as a result of that is that sometimes you can get lower trading costs or sometimes you can get um, a, a little bit lower fees overall because those fees are actually being made up by the securities lending. So is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, it really depends on the person that's doing it. If it's run correctly, securities lending can actually, as I mentioned, lower the overall cost of a particular fund or increase the ability to trade uh, at a reduced price because it's offsetting some of that. But if it's done improperly, you can really create quite a crisis as we saw. So what's the most important thing is always be working with an advisor that first of all understands this and if it's not you then maybe you want to talk to somebody that knows about it but also make sure that the entire structure that you're in sort of the fund managers or the people holding on to the securities are really doing the best thing with respect to the securities lending and not creating more risk for you that A, you didn't know about and B, can't control. You know, the whole idea about the securities lending is it's not something as transparent as necessarily owning one mutual fund or the other and it can be happening behind the back office, 
behind the door, really something that's illiquid and you don't know about and it could cause things to really become problematic in the future. So you really want something that's really a transparent and above board. So uh, you know, hopefully that helped teach a little about securities lending. If you'd like to know more, everything here is available on our channel to help you get your way through retirement and navigate that successfully. And we'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.